Welcome to the Crystal Coach Show with me, your host, Anahata, helping you live every day with clarity, guidance, and practical wisdom. Are you feeling overwhelmed, anxious, maybe disconnected? Do you ever feel like you don't know how to live a life of peace and joy? I am Anahata Roach, the Crystal Coach, and during this show, we channel divine wisdom through stories of service, spirituality, and stones for self-care. The Crystal Coach Show leaves you with a feeling of connection and the clarity it takes towards becoming the best version of yourself as you hear from thought leaders and many others to help you ignite the crystalline nature of who you really are. Stay tuned. The Crystal Coach Show starts now. Hello and welcome to the Crystal Coach Show. I'm your host, Anahara Roach, and I am the Crystal Coach. Uh, today, we are going to talk a little bit about living in authenticity. Now, what does that mean? What is authenticity and how can we live there? It's, it's a puzzling concept, really, but not so difficult once you understand like the difference between conscious and unconscious behaviors. But listen, we've all had times that we say yes to something that really isn't in alignment for us just because we're afraid of missing out, you know, the old FOMO. Well, in this episode, I'm going to share some examples from my client work and also from everyday life that you can use to measure the authentic value of your own actions. And I'm going to give you some guidance for those times that you might want to reframe the thoughts that keep you locked in that FOMO mode. And as usual, the closing segment always has recommendations for stones and crystals that can support your practice of choosing authentic action and releasing fear. So let's get started. Okay, living in authenticity. All right, what <clears throat> what are you what are you talking about? Well, let's let's take this uh, dry January thing for an example. So it started as a really cool idea. Uh, dry January. So we we partied our, our hearts out um, and our bodies are exhausted from partying uh, for the holidays. So why not choose the month after the holidays to just not drink alcohol? Well, that's pretty easy. Um, and then everybody seemed like, well, yeah, they jump in on the, on the bandwagon. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Let's do that. And that was great. I mean, the thought behind it was good, but really what was the motivation for those of you who were on the other end at the beginning of February celebrating the fact that January was over and you could drink again? Where's the authenticity in your action there? You know, you're like all signed up to go dry in January, but then by golly, you know, you didn't learn a thing, did you? You didn't You didn't learn that moderation is key to all things. You just want to go from one extreme to the other. Is How authentic does that really feel in your body? How This is what I want to talk to you about um, in this episode. And, and today it's just really in my, in my radar, if you will. I mean, I just want to ask, are you truly connected to your actions? You know, because... If you are, then living in authenticity means showing up in an authentic way. It's it's really just about being yourself. It's, why why can't you just be yourself and not someone you think others would like to see or hear, but as you are, warts and all. Yeah. So this is, that's the first thing I want to talk about. I've had, you know, people come to me that they, they are so afraid of being judged or they're so afraid of what, you know, making a mistake or uh, being ridiculed or anything like that. They're, they're just so, they live in fear of that. So they try to be somebody that they are not. And we work on the root cause of the fear. 
Why are you afraid of someone else's judgment of you? In my world, someone else's opinion of me is none of my business, especially if it's negative, right? And because that's that person's opinion. And, you know, if the positive uh, opinion, I mean, that feels good. Yeah, sure. But you don't need to take to heart what someone else has is saying, you know, it's, it's their, it's their perception. It's their triggers. It's their issue. And if it keeps you from being and showing up as who you truly are, I mean, I, I call this a heart connection. So your head is being told by maybe ego, oh my goodness, you have to do this because don't you want to look cool? Don't you want to be like, uh, you know, an influencer? Don't you want to be like who somebody else would want to, I mean, you can't be seen as somebody that doesn't do what everybody else is doing. <laughs> my mom used to say to me, well, honey, if, if Debbie jumped off a cliff, would you want to go jumping off the cliff with her? You know, if so-and-so was, was playing in fire and burning up, would you want to play in the fire and burn up with them? It's the kind of thing that you just have to back up and go, wait a minute, is this really good for me? Is this authentic for me? I mean, I, I understand the, that people want to like jump on something that seem, has a lot of energy and, and traction behind it. I get that, that kind of like magnetic pull to, to wanting to be in that vibration. I, I do get that. But the, the, what, it, what are you actually doing? What is, what is the real thing that you're doing? And does it fit with you? This is what I really want to try to drive home to you today, is that we, we have these conscious behaviors and we have these unconscious behaviors. And it's the unconscious behavior sometimes that's driving the bus and not the conscious one. We may think consciously, oh, that's really cool. I'd like to do that. You know, that makes sense. But the unconscious driver is saying, I'm so scared. If I don't do this, you know, people will, will talk bad about me or people will say, oh, well, she didn't do that, you know? And that's that's where you're really, the, the unconscious aspect is that's the trigger that motive, that, that pushed you into doing something you didn't have an opinion one way or the other about before. Um, you know, social media has good, good things and bad things. And one of, I think of the negative aspects of, of social media is that it, it, it creates this atmosphere of fear of missing out or, um, you know, doing what everybody else is doing, you know, this kind of copycat behavior that, you know, it's some, it, it's what is your true motivation here? This is why I'm saying you have to look into your heart and say, what is real for me? What, what do I really want to do? Am, am I doing, am I choosing to do this because everybody else is doing it or because uh, I think I would be perceived as, you know, with it or cool or, you know, in, in, in the right trend or whatever and, and not be an OG or you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you have to really feel into your own heart and, and be willing to make mistakes. Be willing to be seen as a fool. I wouldn't want to be, but I'm willing to be if I can make a complete silly butthole out, butt out of myself. I mean, I'm I'm going to mess up and go, ha ha, that was my bad. I didn't do, I mean, you know, you have to laugh. You have to laugh at your, being able to laugh at yourself and laugh at uh, the situation and not let it come into you and trigger this fear of screwing up, right? I've already talked to you in other episodes about the when you mess up, you can always just laugh and say, 
I'm so sexy. So why not just say I'm sexy? You know, it's like, oh, well, that was a sexy move, wasn't it? Right. Or that was a sexy thing to say. Not. Whatever. You get what I'm saying. You you have to really look into the motivation of what you want to do. What are the actions that are driving? If if I'm just I'm really only I'm referring to this as as an authentic way that you can show up for yourself. If the dry January thing, for example, was something that authentically you really wanted to do, God bless you. That's great. That's wonderful. I think it was a great idea. And I also think that, you know, you could take that pause, those four weeks of pause in, in a behavior that maybe is self-destructive to look at your, you know, your habits and what do I need to do to, um, to change those habits or maybe modify them that, that's best for me, that's healthy for me the healthier. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm just using this as an example. There's, there's a plethora of other things in life that you can, you could apply this to, but I, I had, I'm, I'm just sharing from here. I'm from my heart. I'm, I was a very insecure person for a very long time. I had very low confidence and uh, was really afraid of screwing up and what other ones would think and the um was was always trying to be somebody I wasn't because you know I'm just a small town girl from a little small town in, in Kentucky small town girl from a small town that's sexy anyway I'm just I'm just a good old girl from from a small town in Kentucky and when I moved away there was a part of me that felt like I had to be more, you know, I had to act in more, a different way. I had to speak in a different way. I had to um, behave and think differently. That wasn't really who I was, but the more experience and how, you know, you, you, you may hear some of my accent come out sometimes, especially when I'm channeling my mother, but when when you when you move from one place that has a distinct accent to another, you may or may not lose your accent. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to try to lose your accent to be accepted. But the the thing that I did, I mean, I I grew up with a double name. I grew up with a double name, and so I I moved here and I chopped off my middle name, right? So that's just, a, I guess that was a, my adulting kind of thing that I was no longer a child and I did not want to be perceived as a child. So I cut my name in half, which much to my mother's distress, but that's, you know, that's an example of, was that authentic for me? Actually, yes, it was authentic for me because I was no longer that person that grew up in that small town. I was someone who had more experiences in a broader environment, but the small town girl still lives in me. And there's a place of authenticity that I tap into with her, but she's not who I am. And part of what I'm trying to say is you can, you go through a kind of a metamorphic kind of thing as you're going from your twenties to your thirties, to your forties, to your fifties, that you, with more life experience, you get uh, more awareness. You may be a young person listening to this podcast. I want to assure you that the more you can make decisions, not because you think somebody is going to be judging you, but, but think it's authentic for you. For me, dropping my second name was an authentic action, but be, trying to be somebody I wasn't, no. 
I mean, I can remember the first time I, I walked through the doors of a very shishi high end shopping center. I, I thought there would be guards there like that could detect that I was some hayseed <laughs> and, and, and like refuse me entrance. That's, that's the kind of crazy thoughts I had in my mind that made me act in a way that was not authentic for me. And, and the more, as I say, the more life experience you have, the more confidence you can gain. But I've had clients that are fully grown that still are stuck in that mindset of, I cannot be who I really am because that person isn't worthy of respect or that person isn't worthy of attention or that person is um, not as important as other people. And there's the rub. There's the thing about authenticity that is really an unconscious behavior. And trying to show up and live in authenticity is a conscious choice. Does that, does that make sense? We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to start talking to you about um, themes, themes for this year. You know, 2024 is a year of transformation. Let's talk about, it's not too late to really kind of think about what is your theme for this year? We'll be right back. Hi there. Welcome back to the Crystal Coach Show. I'm your host, Anahata, and we're talking today about living in authenticity. I, I wanted to bring up this theme kind of aspect for the year because I really feel like if you've been reading any of the predictions and all of the other stuff and, and really just take a quick temperature and, you know, wind direction test, what's going on right now in the world is transformational. So you don't have to do a vision board to do this. You can just say, okay, in this year, what I'd really like to do is have a theme for myself. And so that the more I can be in alignment with that theme in my actions, the more I am in alignment with myself. Okay. So for example, uh, something like radical, what does radical mean? Radical authenticity, for example, uh, to, this is my year for radical authenticity. Well, that doesn't mean you have to go out and protest authenticity. It means that you need to be a, an activist for yourself. Anything that you, you put the word radical in front of, radical transformation, radical authenticity, radical empowerment, whatever that is, that means you are becoming the energy of the activist is added to whatever you're mod you know, the, the radical is modifying. I hope that makes sense. The more you can advocate for yourself, that more that you can be aware of, say, let's just, since we're talking about authenticity, let's say radical authenticity, okay? So if, if so my theme, okay, so yeah, right. This is my theme for the year, radical authenticity. I, I'm just pulling that out. It's not, but what, if it, if it were yours or if it were mine, what I would be doing then would be consciously keeping that in my, in my mind about, am I being authentic? Is this being true to myself? Am I saying something in a way that's genuine, that's authentic to me? I mean, I'm not talking about when you're, you know, just opening your mouth and talking and saying what's inside your head. You can be kind. You can be polite, you can be civil, uh, it does, without being disingenuous. You don't have to be mean. Do you know what I'm saying? You, but finding a way to 
have that in your mind and at the forefront of your brain saying, oh, wait, this doesn't feel right. You know, it's, it's like having your brain and your heart connected. It's very important to have your brain and your heart connected because that way the two of them working together has so much more access than the brain only has five ways, right? The heart has multi dimensions. And so the heart and the body can tell you, they can give you more information than just your brain. And of course, the ego likes to sit up in your brain and tell you what to do. So you always have to be conscious of, okay, is this coming from a place of fear or is this coming from a place of love? And knowing that or recognizing that helps makes it easier. It just makes it easier to discern if you're being, if you're, if you're, if you're being authentic or not. You know, people, the energy of authenticity is palatable. There are, there are those people who, who try too hard. You know what I'm saying? They just try too hard. My husband has a, a term called, he calls people like that sincerely which is not very nice. And they don't, and I, I make sure he doesn't say that to anybody's face, but people who are just trying so hard to be nice or to be sincere are really, you can pick up on the energy of it and you know, it's not, it's anything but sincere. Um, in fact, it can be really kind of passive aggressive sometimes. And so you, you feel that energy when someone's coming to you and they're saying something and you go, oh, yeah, that's not real. You don't have to let it all hang out to be real. But there's a place that you can work from, especially if you're connected to your heart and you know that what you're saying comes from this place of love rather than fear, it changes the whole it changes the whole vibration. Your your personality, your energy, the way you uh, approach and, and speak to people, the way that you can make decisions, all of that comes if you if you you know I've talked to you about place between you we can choose to live in fear we can choose to live in love but the more heart connection you have to yourself i'm not talking about heart connection to other people to you heart connection inside the more you can hear your heart though listen to your heart the heart always gives you a choice the heart always leads you in this higher vibration of love and the ego is bossing you around you can kind of figure out after a while oh yeah this is a fear-based kind of thought form isn't it Oh, I have to do this. You know, I have to. Well, when you say you have to, when you hear that, you have to do this. Think about it. Think about it. Is that something, is that really authentic for you? Is that something you have to do? If, if it's not, don't do it. It's as simple as that. Now, you know, if it's in your job, it's in your job description and yeah, you have to do and you, but it's, it's not something you really want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you that, you know, you tell your boss, no, I, I'm not doing that because that's not authentic for me. But if you are at, um, doing this radical authenticity for yourself, you're just really at being an activist around your own authentic vibe if it will, you know, I, I, I really want you to understand that the, the thing within is what come, you know, it, if it's in you, it comes out and you can try to mask it, but if it's, if it's fake, it's going to come out in one way or another, Do you know, if the energy is not sincere, then people will, will feel that even if they don't recognize it, they will feel it and react accordingly. So why not try to be an activist in authenticity for yourself? And the tip that I would have for you is, is as you do this, as you're saying something, 
how does it feel to you? Does it feel like it's coming from your heart? Or does it, are you hearing in your mind what you need to say next? Hmm. That's a trick. If you're hearing in your mind what you need to say next before the other person is finished talking, you're not really in your heart. You're in your head. And if you feel like, well, there's a point I need to make and I need to make it, that's your ego. The heart will say, well, well the, the heart is just so forgiving and allowing and just accepting of whatever place you're in and whatever place the other person's in. The more you, you're, you're connecting to your heart, the more you can live in a place of acceptance and peace and where you don't beat yourself up. Oh my God, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Ah, why do we do this to ourselves? So the authentic, the authentic part of that vibration is knowing that when you're speaking or when you're, you're acting, it's in, it's in a way that comes from a, a higher motivation than fear. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. But, you know, I'd love comments. I'd love uh, any, I'd rather love some interaction. Um, and, you know, when you, if you see this later, uh, make a comment. I'll, I'll respond. I, I really would like to know how this is landing for you. And if you've had any experiences with doubt, the doubting of yourself, and and making those those choices that weren't in alignment with your authentic place. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take another quick break, and when I come back, I've got some stones and crystals that maybe will be a good thing for you to have with you if you're practicing this radical authenticity. We'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome back to the Crystal Coach Show. Um, I've got, we're talking about living in authenticity and I've had, I've been all over the map with um, things that we can do and say and how we can, um, how we can really be in alignment and an activist for ourselves to be as authentic as we can be. But I'll, this is the time of the episode that I usually just, I, I go to my crystal closet and what speaks to me is pulled out. And um, I think that these stones in particular, in regards to what I've been talking about today, connecting your head with your heart, um, self-transformation, um, finding a place of calm and joy, perseverance and insight and gratitude will really be helpful for you. You don't have to have all of them um, and you don't have to big have to have a big chunk of them either. It's just the vibration of these crystals and stones are, are really um, good to have if you are actually in this point of practicing that radical authenticity we talked about. And whatever your theme is for the year, remember to set that theme from a place of authenticity because it's really very important that as you go through your life you show up for yourself first as who you really are because that person's perfect that person really is a beautiful being everybody's had trauma everybody's had hard times everybody has issues it's just how we look at them and how we deal with them that makes all the difference so the first stone up is fluorite it's green fluorite now i've talked to you about fluorite before 
um, fluorite comes in all kinds of colors. It uh, comes in purple and green and blue and clear and yellow. But I have a piece of green fluorite in my hand. And this is a real good, it's a heart vibration. And it's a good connector to, to connect the mind with the heart or the heart with the mind. And it, it's just because it's green, it's a healing vibration. All fluorite has to do with focus and, and discipline. And if you're going to, going for radical authenticity, that this will support that. But it but in a way that connects the the two disparate control centers. <laughs> You've got the heart has its own brain, right? So the there's the the five senses brain at the top of your head, and then there's the heart brain in your chest. And when the two of them are working in concert together, you you can't help but be living in authenticity. And in that vein, there's another one. I think I've shown this to you before called purpurite, P-U-R-P-U-R, purpurite. Um, it is a beautiful, shiny purple. And it helps also to connect the head with the heart. So you've got a connection from the heart to the head and one from the head to the heart. So got all your bases covered there. Now, uh, another piece that I, that called to me for, for me to share with you is called uh, Peter Sight, Peter Sight, and that's P-I-E, Peter Sight. This is about self-transformation. So we were talking about that at, at, at first is that this is the year of transformation, right? So self-transformation and in becoming a more authentic you, I think Peter's site would be a very good vibration to support that. Okay. Um, then we have snowflake obsidian. You see all the little snowflakes on here, aren't they pretty? Also, all obsidian is about protection. Uh, any, any variety of obsidian, you've got a plethora of those as well. Um, but snowflake obsidian gives you some persistence and insight, you know, this kind of to motivate you to feel free from fear, you know, because you're protected, but the insight that you need to reflect on, is this authentic for me or not? So I, I like the vibration of snowflake obsidian. It's, it's a, it's a sweet stone. Speaking of sweet stones, I have um, another thing that came out was watermelon tourmaline. It's called watermelon tourmaline because it is green and pink. And I'm hoping that the camera picks up the, the sheen of the green and the pink. But watermelon tourmaline is, is uh, not, it, it's kind of rare to find, honestly, um, because tourmaline comes in all kinds of colors but when it's you know got the pink and the green right up next to each other that's that's a more unusual combo and but the vibration of watermelon tourmaline is calm and joy so if you're looking to be in this place of authentic activism you need to have a, a way to connect to that place inside you that is calm that has access to joy rather than fear. I mean, joy is the portal to the unconditional love that is source energy. So that's why we needed to tell you about watermelon tourmaline. Then last but not least, I believe I've shared this with you before, but it's always a good thing to have. Now, this is a huge piece. Most pieces that I see in stone stores are little bitty fingernail size, but it's called Hiddenite. Hiddenite, H-I-D-D-E-N-I-T-E. -E. It is found in uh, in and around Hiddenite uh, or Hidden, some, is it Hiddenite, North Carolina? It's one of the Carolinas. Anyway, that is a vibration of gratitude. It's a kind of a light, light green. And 
gratitude, I always preach about gratitude being a portal to joy. And the more gratitude you can hold, we, you know, talking about being connected with your heart, that, that vibration helps you to live more authentically, to feel more in alignment with your higher light self embodied in this physical vessel. If you'd like to know more about crystals and stones, or if you'd like to talk to me about how we could work together to help you live a more authentic life, to release those programs and those unconscious behaviors that are keeping you locked in a place of fear, please reach out to thecrystalcoach.com and you know there's a contact tab for me or you can send me an email at mycrystalcoach at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thanks for joining me today and thanks for listening to the Crystal Coach Show. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Crystal Coach Show, helping you live every day with clarity, guidance, and practical wisdom with me, your host, Anahata. Tune in every first and third Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time on TransformationTalkRadio.com where we channel divine wisdom through stories of service, spirituality, and stones for self-care. Feel connected and reside in the vibration of love on The Crystal Coat Show. For more information and to become the best version of yourself, visit thecrystalcoach.com. That's thecrystalcoach.com. See you next time.